Richard Rosenblatt. There you go. Thank you very much, John. I'm sure, hopefully this presentation will be as exciting as bringing Lance. Um, but we're gonna do our best. This is actually the first time that I've ever talked about demand media in hopefully what will be a comprehensive way. So let's go ahead and get started. Just real quickly, um, demand media has its roots in social media. We have about 500 employees and our team are all experienced in social media and that's really what we care about. Second, we have over 70 million unique visitors that visit our vertical network of websites. And I'm gonna talk about, hopefully today, how we were able to do that and how we're going beyond that. Third, and a lot of people may not know this, is we own a company called Pluck, which is the largest supplier of integrated and distributed social media across the web. With lots of brands you've probably heard of, like USA Today, the NFL, B Sky B, and I'm gonna talk a little about, believe it or not, Scott's Miracle Grow. Uh, lastly, we have a studio concept, which I'm gonna spend a lot of time on, which we think is the next generation of professional, user-generated content that's gonna help fill the web with content. And lastly, to do all this, we raised a lot of money, we raised $355 million in the last two years, and that's hopefully enabled us to do a lot of really unique things. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started. We founded this company based on three main principles, and hopefully throughout the presentation you will see how these principles come into everything we're trying to do. The first is that we realize that it's a search-driven world, that 80% or something like that of the global audience is gonna find your content through search. So if you recognize that, you have to organize your business and your websites very differently. The days of counting on users coming through your front door are gone. If someone's looking for something, for instance, how to keep their house warm while saving money in an environmentally friendly way, that's a very, very long tail search. They're gonna type eight to 10 words into the search bar, and if you could deliver them that piece of content about how to save money during winter in an eco-friendly way, you've got a very loyal audience, and you've got a great way to get an advertiser and someone to click on that ad. So imagine doing that 300,000 times, that one little piece of long tail content, and that's what we did with eHow. And I'm gonna show you how we grew to 25 million unique visitors organically by just adding content. The second one is because the audience is so fragmented, because Google does such a great job of helping you find the long tail, that these audiences are fragmenting and they're ending up all over the place. So the way we think to bring them back together is in passionate verticals. So again, by way of example, someone goes into search and they decide to search on how to find a golf course in Palm Beach that's friendly to a low handicap. Real searches that happen, right? When they get that article, and hopefully we answer that question, they're on Golf Link, many pages deep, right? We then hook them with social media tools. So now that they're there, we answer that question, they can upload their golf scores, and Golf Link's grown to be the number one golf site on the web. Bigger than PGA Tour.com, bigger than Golf.com, and everybody I talk to from the PGA says we've never heard of it. And my point is you don't need to hear of it. Millions of people found it organically and are now part of that community. Lastly, and what I talked about with Lance, was that social media, I believe, and I hope it's true, is gonna become the new social operating system of the entire web. Five years ago, we didn't expect every website to have search. We were okay with digging through a directory type of structure. Then, everything changed, right? Google redefined search, and now we couldn't go to a website without search. Well, if you think about that, search is a way of using technology to find stuff. Social media is a way of using people and your friends to discover stuff. So why won't that be as important so when you read the media, you can talk back to it? And hopefully I'm gonna show you why I think that that is going to be the next big operating system of the web. So we've organized the business based on those principles in three main groups. First, it's our tools division, and this is the idea that we believe we can take social media everywhere and to everybody. So just by way of example, yesterday, because it was a post-election type of day, not on our network, on our partner's network, over 175 million times somebody interacted with a social media piece of content. 175 million times. It's now happening three billion times a month. So the days of social media only occurring on MySpace or Facebook or Bebo or um, different websites, I believe is gone. And it's only gonna become more and more per pervasive. And at the end, I'm gonna show you a video that shows our new product that hopefully will allow everybody to bring social media and content to their site. Well, the second part, social media tools aren't enough, right? If you're USA Today or you're Washington Post, some of our great partners, you've got content and you could add social media tools to get people involved in the content, again, so they could talk back at it, but what if you can't generate enough content? But what if you wanna generate even more content so you can drive more traffic? We've created something called the studio, and I'm gonna show you an example of what I think is the new face of content creators. Then lastly, what started out as our lab, a way to prove these first two points, that you can grow a website organically using social media and content is our own vertical network. Search-driven, principle number one, Passionate verticals, principle number two. Social media operating system, principle number three. So I'm gonna talk about that. 
Okay, so people on the web are talking about things on websites this group probably imagines, but outside this group, most people couldn't imagine, right? On The Economist, they're talking about how technology has a positive effect on education. This is all powered, obviously, by our pluck tools. On The Washington Post, they're talking about whether or not Obama is the right candidate. On the Discovery Channel, they're talking about a green economy. And this one I love, in Circuit City, a retail website, they're talking about whether or not the best way to stop the dreaded rings of death is um, some way on Halo 3. On a retailer, having a discussion about their product through our social media. And the last of my favorite, uh, the last speaker was talking about green, Scott's Miracle Grow, right? A website that's all about lawn care had over 280,000 comments, submissions to its website this year. Thousands of people are uploading pictures of their lawns, they're talking about it, they're integrating with their brand, and the part that's the most amazing to me is they've got a product that, I don't know what it is, it's something like the fertilizer weed whacker, literally, and 13,000 people came to that website to recommend that product to their friends. And nobody would believe that's possible, especially around lawn care. So what I'm saying is from the head to the tail, we think social media is gonna be the most pervasive power in the coming years of powering websites. The head, they've already got great content, they need to add social media tools. Hopefully, I'm going to talk to you a little bit later about how we're going to also help them add more content. The torso, where I'm sure there's a lot of people here that have got wonderful websites, they're producing some content, but they want to produce more. Because the more content you produce, if it's quality content and you understand search, the more traffic you'll drive. And lastly, there's all these great blogs that produce one or two things that they're only around because of these social media tools. How do they get more content? Well, the truth is, content at scale is required across the entire tail. So we can give you the social media tools, but we also want to be able to produce your content. So this is what I want to talk about. We have not talked about this at length. This is what we're calling Demand Studios. What Demand Studios is, is think of Wikipedia, but in a little bit different way. We actually produce through technology tens of thousands of algorithmic driven titles. And I'm going to show you some examples that take in lots and lots of inputs and determine whether or not there is an audience for a piece of content whether or not there's an advertiser for that piece of content, and whether or not we have the ability to get traffic for that piece of content, whether that is through search, through YouTube, through social media. Well, once those three pieces come together, we think that we can change what the face of media is. No longer is it Charlie Rose or um, Stone Phillips. It is someone like Alicia. She is a single mom with two kids, educated in personal finance, who wanted to make some extra money and express herself. She was going to use a blog, but the problem with the blog is you have to figure out what to write about. So Alicia, in the last four or five months, has made over $7,000. She's been able to express herself, and she's been able to do it through our studio. But what's a little unique about the studio and different than you know, general user-generated content is in order to be a member of the studio, you need to submit us a writing sample, your background. Our editorial group takes a look at it. You're then invited to the studio. You then produce one article. We track the efficiency of the article, the quality of that article. If you are approved again, you come back in. If you're not approved at the very beginning, you could then write for our revenue share, and it's a whole different path. So let's see how it actually works. So Alicia logs in. She's been, she's been invited to the studio, and up come a number of different titles. She's decided to choose a title on how to make money clipping, uh, how to make money clipping coupons, because she has a personal finance background. It's something she knows something about. She actually checks that title out. We then give her a platform. We make it very simple. It's already optimized for search. It's already got advertisers we know through uh, one of our third parties that can match people that want to clip coupons. She produces it, but we don't stop then. When she then produces that piece of content, it then goes into the crowd, into the community who have been pre-screened as editors. They then edit it, send it back to her. If she needs to rewrite it, she rewrites it, and when it's all said and done, we haven't touched this piece of content, and uh, we have a piece of content e -how. So if you think about it, you know, lather, rinse, repeat. We did that 300,000 times and built eHow to be one of the larger how-to properties on the web, from 4 million uniques two years ago to over 25 million. That's what we did with Livestrong. We were able to find professional editors in health in different categories that our algorithm told us people want to read about, and we produced the content. I'm going to show you in a minute that we do the same thing for video. And what a lot of people probably don't know is that we're the largest supplier of video to all of YouTube, 10 times bigger than anybody else. Number two, I believe, is CBS, a professional media company. And we pr produce 10 times the amount of videos, and we don't own a camera. All through the same idea, algorithmic titles, a video platform, pre-screened filmmakers, optimized, pushed out to the community and the crowd, comes back, and we own content. And what's amazing about it is even YouTube needs content. 
right? I mean, they've got more content you would think they know what to do with, but they need rights cleared, long tail content where there's an advertiser. And we've been able to have build a great relationship with YouTube where we could produce them that content, whether it's in Spanish, different languages, or on the long tail. So what that's led to is we, as I mentioned, have 135,000 videos, 10 times as many videos as anybody else. We're now the fourth most viewed channel on all of YouTube. We'll be number two if the current rate continues in the next um, four months. Truthfully, we're going to be number one, and then Britney Spears introduced a new album, so it knocked us back a little bit. Uh, true story, by the way, that Britney Spears could affect my business is shocking. But um, we're, we're clearly growing on our way, and we're, we're growing over 10 times in every metric. By remember, adding content to a great platform, but you can't just add content. You've got to understand what the users are looking for. So what's next? All these brands on here, whether it's Reuters, Jupiter Media, Circuit City, Saturn, USA Today, B Sky B, the NFL, these are all our partners through social media. So we power all of these websites by giving them the tools and technologies they need to engage their audience. Well, what's next? We want to give them, like we did to YouTube, algorithmic, ROI-driven content to help grow their audience. And we have some great partnerships coming out that we're going to announce where traditional publishers are going to use our, you know, what we call Pro-Am, professional user content to help grow their websites. So how do we go beyond this? How do we go beyond our publishers and how are we able to offer this product to everybody across the tail? So we announced yesterday, I don't know if everybody read it on TechCrunch, thank you Michael Arrington very much for writing a review about it. It came out on Thursday, we already have a few hundred publishers that signed up, we haven't even started promoting it yet, and it's what we call Pluck On Demand. And what Pluck On Demand does is it's a self-serve model that allows people to benefit from our content, and I'm going to show you some brands and professional content, it reads the page with a simple widget, as simple as AdSense, to add content on your website, and it adds social media tools. But what's great about it is think about comments, ratings, reviews, personas. If you're a long tail website, and I'm going to show you a video in a second, and you're, for instance, Joe's Garden, and there's thousands of gardening websites, the biggest problem is people aren't going to comment on your website because they don't want to be the first one to comment, right? It's kind of like no one wants to be the first one in a party. But imagine if your comments can be distributed. So now there's a thousand gardening websites, and Jane comments about her lawn on one gardening website, and that shows up across the whole network of websites. So now you're going to have vibrant communities. We'll very soon be rolling out groups. So you can have what looks like a very vibrant group on a very long tail website that is sharing from the whole community. And that's what we call Pluck and Demand. What's neat about Pluck and Demand is not only do we have tens of thousands of pieces of content from our own library and six million blogs from one of our products called Blogburst, but we also have great content from Encyclopedia Britannica, from the Harvard Health Publications, from a number of very professional people that want to syndicate their content. So I have time. I, I want to run this video. Instead of hearing from me, I want you to see a little video we put together that will kind of explain to you in detail, we hope, how Pluck On Demand actually works. So if we can go ahead and clue the video, cue the video. This is Joe. He's the proud owner of joessupergarden.com. Only Joe's a little glum these days. The reason for that is simple. There's just not enough content on his site, and because of it, he can't seem to keep people on his site or grow his page views. Luckily, there's a new tool sure to help Joe and others like him grow their websites and business fast. It's called Pluck On Demand, and with a few easy steps, Joe will be able to enrich his site with diverse and relevant content while increasing page views and revenue. Here's how it works. Pluck On Demand is a series of content and social media widgets that match the look and feel of your site. When users interact with these widgets, the experience happens inside your site. There's no linking out. This means more page views and user engagement. What's more, the widgets are pre-packaged with advertising, meaning each new page view brings more revenue for your site. Let's take a look at the content widgets on joessupergarden.com. The related content widget reads his site and offers related links to articles and videos. When Joe's users click on a link to an article, the full article or video is seen within his site. The related tag widget also reads the site and offers up related keywords. When a user clicks on a tag, a full page of related content links are shown around that word. With all of this interesting and relevant content, Joe's users stick around a lot longer and he sees a lot more page views. And since every extra page comes with ads, Joe's earning extra revenue too. So where does this content come from? Pluck On Demand has a huge library of professional articles and video from high quality websites and blogs. There are over 200,000 articles and 120,000 videos from brands such as eHow, Expert Village, and Answerback, as well as millions of original blog posts from the Blog Burst Network, featuring some of the best blogs on the web. 
And of course, a lot more premium content to be added soon. Pluck On Demand doesn't just give you content, it instantly adds a vibrant community to your site. There are a lot of gardening enthusiasts out there, and Joe would like nothing more than for them to congregate on his site. With Pluck On Demand social media widgets, Joe's users can add comments or recommendations to articles and videos. They can also see comments made on an article, even if it was made on another site. Meaning that a Pluck On Demand article is not just an article, it's a conversation. Joe can also highlight the users that are most active on his site and read their profiles. By adding simple widget code to his site, Joe has added a community. So with Pluck On Demand, Joe has more content, more page views, more engaged users, and an extra source of revenue. And he was able to add all of this in about 10 minutes using the Pluck On Demand implementation wizard. If you want to grow your site through relevant content and social media, give Pluck On Demand a try. To get started, register for an account on www.pluck.com forward slash on demand. All right, great. So I thought that would be probably the best way. It's, it's kind of a hard topic to explain, but now I think it's pretty obvious, right? So back to those three principles. What we're doing in that product, benefit from the fact that we understand how to drive traffic to your website because we understand the right content, whether it's video or text. The second one is once you get them to your website, they're going to verticalize and they're going to want to talk about certain passionate things. The social media tools allow them to do that, and with our soon to be rolled out of groups, they'll be able to do that in the long tail also. And lastly, social media then does become the operating system. Once these users have been commenting, rating, reviews, build profiles on your websites, these are going to be customers for a long time. And that's, that's what we're doing. So I mean, the concept is to really change the way in which social media is perceived by adding tools, technologies, and content. So thank you very much, John.